am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, family. Welcome to this week's episode of Live Your Best Life with me, Liz Wright. And in today's time together, what I wanted to, what I felt was really strongly in the Lord's heart, was to just share a a really empowering word for you straight from the scriptures to do with the time that we're in. And then I'll share a little bit of an encounter that's connected to it and we'll just apply it to your lives. And we'll just go there together at the end of the show. And I'll just maybe guide you in um, in just a prayer of the heart in response to what the Lord is saying. But you, I'm, I know you're going to be so empowered today. So just in beginning, I pray for grace, whatever you're doing, whatever's going on in your world right now, that for these next 20 to 30 minutes, you will be graced by Jesus to freshly hear him for yourselves and just shift, shift to a completely different level and place of freedom and um, just being empowered by him, confident in who you actually are and the authority that you carry. So Jesus has been drawing me strongly into Song of Solomon again, and particularly chapter four. And what I felt when I was, I'll read in a second, what I felt when I was reading the word was that the language in Song of Solomon four is articulating for us right now, for many of us, the deep heart communication that's coming from us, the deep things in our hearts that we are saying to the Lord and then his response back to us. So just hear this for yourselves. Let this language escort you into a fresh experience between you and Jesus. Let it be your heart to heart communication right now, because I promise you, you're going to experience him in these next, this next 20, 30 minutes. You're going to experience the Lord speaking to your heart and it's going to transform you because this is what he's doing right now. It's time for us to really see from heaven's perspective, really see from heaven's perspective, really understand into the core of our being what Jesus is doing in the earth, in our own personal lives, our own personal circumstances, and the world around us and the world at large. It's time for us to see from the high place, from the mountaintop, so to speak, using Song of Solomon's language, from where we actually truly are seated with Jesus in heavenly places tuned in to the reality of that and freshly experiencing his perspective of reality today and coming in agreement with that and being strengthened by that knowing in the core of your being the truth and obviously it's the truth that sets us free so as i begin to read just listen with your heart and just look at jesus with, through the eyes of your heart he's going to flood you with fresh light so i'm just beginning from um verse Four. So this is Jesus speaking to you right now in response to, I believe, what many of us have been, like I said, speaking to him in the secret place. There's been like a, a resolve happen in many of our hearts to choose to believe Jesus no matter what, like a different level of a determination of faith and a desire for Jesus alone and to walk in intimacy, and um, just all out, just sold out for God, because there is nothing else, right? He is the solution. He's the answer. He's the way. He's the truth. He's life. You know, he's source of life. And and uh, I've been feeling this. I know, I know it because of the communications that come into the ministry. We get collectively thousands of communications coming in. So we do get to hear what many of, the, of you around the world are feeling and uh, what you're seeing and experiencing of the Lord but I'm also feeling it deeply in my spirit that there is this shift of determination and resolve happening and a change that Holy Spirit's bringing about in all of us so this is Jesus speaking to you right now when I look at you I see your inner strength so stately and strong you are as secure as David's fortress. 
I'm just going to stop there for one moment and pause. When you study the original language there, it's as always, it has such a great depth of meaning. So the language you use there to describe your inner stately strength is referring to your internal decision to yield your life to Jesus, to choose to trust him no matter what. Even if you do not understand that collectively the world around you, the world at large, your own personal journey that you're walking through. But you say, you're saying in the deepest part of your heart, I yield my life to you, Jesus. I am going to run with you no matter what the cost. I love you. There is no other way. I choose to trust you. And in this moment, surrender. Like I said, so many people are getting to this place at the moment and it's by Holy Spirit's grace because he knows what he's doing in raising up his bride into effective governance from a beautiful, powerful, intimate, real, vibrant relationship with Jesus. That's just, I believe it is going to be unprecedented in the numbers of us that begin to truly awaken to the life that we we see described in Song of Solomon, um, the life that was predestined for all of us to walk in. So Jesus is speaking to the very core of you now, to those tiny movements of your heart where you have said, I surrender, I yield, I will follow you, I will trust you, I do not know how to do this deeper life, but it's all I want. Those tiny movements, those moments in your heart when you have spoken like this, Jesus is responding to, they have overwhelmed the heart of God. That's the true, voluntary, beautiful love that Jesus died to receive as the reward of his suffering, your pure choice to be his, no matter what, to trust him, no matter what. It translates into his heart as pure love. It's um, part, it's the divine romance. You are as secure as David's fortress. Your virtues and grace cause a thousand famous soldiers to surrender to your beauty. So the inner beauty of your new creation nature is what he sees, the beauty of who you actually are. Your pure faith and love rest over your heart. So in that statement there, what I feel in the Lord is him encouraging you to know that he sees, even though you may feel that your faith is compromised and tiny and intermittent, he sees it as pure because it's real. The very core of you is, contains pure faith. You wouldn't even be listening to this program right now if that wasn't the case. So your pure faith and your love rest over your heart. And this is our response, the Shulamite's response But this is what I have been already hearing in our heart, in many of our hearts. So if you haven't already said this, and you're feeling the Lord stirring in you right now, I encourage you to agree with these words in your heart and begin to speak to him, this truth from you. I've made up my mind until the darkness disappears and the dawn has fully come. In spite of shadows and fears, I will go to the mountaintop with you and the mountain, the mountain of suffering love and the hill of burning incense. Yes, I will be your bride. So in other words, you've made up your mind that no matter what, no matter what, the Lord requires of you, no matter what the journey ahead of you entails, you will, you have set your heart's focus. You are moving forward from a place of, I will trust you, Jesus, no matter what, you are good. I know that you are good. No matter what, even if I, in my limited understanding, if I do not understand you, I will trust you. I will trust in your faithfulness. I will trust you. Jesus is saying that he desires us to, I can see him right now. He said, take hold of my hand and come with me into the next chapter of your life. Because he's taking us into a deeper place, into uh, more sophisticated levels of partnership with him. 
So this is Jesus's response to you, as you have just said in your heart to him afresh, as I will be your bride, no matter what the walk, no matter what the journey, I will trust you. I, this is how he responds to your heart saying that. Every part of you is so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty without flaw within. So that choice, that very choice that you have just made, he sees as perfection. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me as we climb the highest peaks together. Come with me through the archway of trust, which is what you've just done. You've chosen to trust. No matter how you feel, you've chosen to trust. Holy Spirit, whoa. We will look down from the crest of the glistening mounts and from the summit of our sublime sanctuary. Together we will wage war in the lion's den and the leopard's lair as they watch nightly for their prey. Meaning, as many of you will already understand, that you're now positioned through your heart's decision to fully trust, to no matter what Jesus asks of you, no matter where the journey of your life takes you, you will trust him. That positions you to go up onto the high places with him, to come into that mountaintop perspective, knowing him, living from a different level of intimacy because of your surrendered heart. Holy Spirit, where he becomes, wow, I keep feeling Holy Spirit moving through me when I'm speaking. He's drawing you to this place of the other side of this choice of surrender and abandonment and trust is a life of joy and peace, of intimacy, of knowing Jesus at a completely different level of union, of being able to be trusted with those situations of suffering because you know now that the one and increasingly will experience the one who is the solution in those situations flooding through you as redemptive power bathing everything in the light the, the restorative recreative light of his presence within you pouring out of you as you simply yield and you choose to allow him to be the solution. So in that situation, when you start to live like this on the inside, that horrendously difficult situation that you're dealing with, in that moment, he's trusting you now with being in the midst of that suffering, that difficult situation. And as you yield to him and you lean into him with your surrendered heart, like I said, you're going to increasingly see Jesus becoming the solution in that situation and utterly transforming it as you yield. This is the power and the wisdom of the fully surrendered life, the yielded life. And I feel it at the moment. So many, like I said at the beginning, so many of us have got to a place where another level of surrender is what our heart is, is saying to God. I do not understand you yet. I will trust you. And from here, from this high place, we start to see very clearly. We begin to see as God sees are the eyes of our heart get flooded with light. We begin to have divine perspective. And particularly right now, what I feel is the Lord wants to give the, those of us that are saying yes to this deeper life of surrender with Jesus, deeper trust in him. He wants to trust us with perspective so that we can be in agreement with him to begin to shift governmentally from this place of authority that flows from our union here in our surrendered life to begin to shift the situation that is affecting the nations, to begin to clear out the spirit realm to, as we come in agreement with, with God's mind. It's so, so important that, and, and it's, it's in this place of complete surrender where we're no longer being buffeted around by trying to get our own needs met. You know, we're not vulnerable to attacks of the enemy because we're not in a fear-driven, self-preserving state anymore where we would have an agenda out of a survival mentality or a sensation of separateness that causes us to feel very bereft of the Lord's love and in a state of, 
orphan heartedness, which allows the enemy to come in and manipulate us to have a self-serving agenda to be to be easily manipulated by the political spirit or a spirit of fear that will start to come around and try and influence our hearts. This place of surrender and trust that where we literally increasingly live from the experience of his love begins to warfare proof our life. We can be trusted with more and more uh, situations that the Lord will walk us through that require redemption, redemptive power, because the Lord knows we're yielded to him and his power starts to flow through. So we're no longer in that reactionary level in the midst of suffering. We're not self-preserving out of fear. We're not trying to fix things in our own strength. Well, our hearts are now defaulting into, into a, a position of what do you want to be for me in this situation, Jesus? How, what is your mind in this situation, Jesus? How do you want to resolve this situation, Jesus? What does restoration look like from heaven's perspective right now? How do you view that situation, Lord, that governmental decision, that person's trauma, who that person is, it's particularly difficult to deal with. How do you see them, Jesus? This attitude of heart that's contrary to your nature that is some is, is triggering inside of me, Jesus. What does restoration look like? How do you want me to be in agreement? This is the life of bridal intercession, as many of us know. But I really, really feel like the reason why so many of us have got this, this going on inside of us is because the Lord is preparing us to govern really govern at a completely different level from a place of like I say yieldedness and rest being still on the inside so we can hear clearly the thoughts and intentions of our God's heart so he wants he wants I'm going to share a little bit of one of my most recent experiences I've had with him to do with this as well and going forward just to again hear this for yourself you know this is an invitation as I'm sharing prophetically with you it's an invitation for you to experience step through and experience Jesus this way yourself you know he wants to write the future with us he is about the, the restoration of all things, right? Ephesians 4, the one who descended, Jesus ascended to begin the restoration and fulfillment of all things. And that's the time we're in. And he's calling us to his side to partner with him. It had a completely different level to, he, he's, to co-reign with him so that we can know the redemptive purposes, the redemptive plans of his mind in every given situation and sit there and release them, decree them into being, decree something straight from his heart and see it established. He wants to write your future. He wants to cause us to write the future with him together. So the experience that I had, I was taken in a time of worship, found myself, there's lots to this experience, but the part I feel to share for today was um, I was taken to heaven, found myself at the, at the edge of a huge uh, expanse, like a field, grassy field. And it was like the size of about three or four football pitches. It was huge. And right in the distance, I saw this enormous marble building and I Jesus moved me he was with me and he moved me all the way up the field to the entrance of this incredible majestic building that had pillars at the front of it and I walked in and as I walked slowly down this huge hall I couldn't see the end of it on either side of the wall there were paintings huge paintings and Jesus said to me you are in the art gallery of heaven and these paintings depict the episodes in history so that, that he, Jesus, had intervened in as he partnered in the life of his friends. And so I saw many scenes, and, the, and, and as I looked at one of the paintings, it was the life of Moses. And I went in to the painting. I went in through, it was like a doorway with Jesus and began to experience in a vision different episodes in Moses' life. From the time when he was a baby, I saw the hand of God 
securing the basket that, that, that uh, he'd been placed in to save his life by his parents and s- securing his destiny. And then it moved through different episodes of Moses's life until I, I came to the moment where uh, the, the Red Sea had just closed up over the Egyptians that had been chasing God's people. And they had moved across, the sea closed over, And I watched the moment where Miriam and Aaron and Moses and Zipporah and all the thousands, hundreds of thousands of Israelites were stood on the other side of the sea, the Red Sea, and they had been completely delivered. And then there was this eruption of joy between them. And I saw Jesus standing there, wrapping his arms around them. And I heard Zipporah say to Moses, look at your people, Moses, they are free. And then there was this huge, huge celebration between them and Jesus was hugging them and dancing around with them. And I knew in my spirits that Jesus was releasing understanding to me. I knew that he was inviting us into these same kinds of experiences and that he desires above all else deep friendship. And from that heart to heart friendship that we can walk in in with Jesus in incremental measures, enormous experiences of deliverance will come from our lives and it may not look exactly like Moses's life but everything is of equal importance those heart-to-heart moments where you are authentically just loving Jesus you are enjoying him being with him pursuing him spending time with him just prioritizing him choosing to surrender and yield to him to his leadership his perfect leadership trusting him it's that walk that produces massive fruit it's love yieldedness out of love for jesus and then the walk of obedience that comes from that that displaces principalities and powers displaces strongholds because we literally become a conduit as the body of Christ, as the power of the power of God, as he powers through us. And he's inviting us into this. So there were other things that I saw in heaven, and other episodes in history. And then, but that was the one that Jesus made it on. And then I knew that those of us that would accept this invitation and walk this way, at some point in the future when we are in heaven or maybe even before we will stand in this great gallery in heaven and we will watch Jesus savor that moment these are memories of God and we will be able to celebrate with him and remember those moments together because they are the moments in the future that we create through our friendship and through our yielded lives so In finishing, I just pray for you that you will experience Jesus at a completely different level today. Everything, everything holy, everything that I have just shared, that you will begin to experience this like you never have before. It's time. Like I said, it's time for us to co-reign with Christ from the mountaintop, to have divine perspective, heavenly perspective and to be strengthened by that that to live from the strength of that perspective to come in agreement with him and start to release the power of God in the earth through our yielded hearts so I bless your week I bless you with the best experience of Jesus's love that you've ever had this week and a different measure of powerful faith dispensing through you as, as you switch me off now, just look, I encourage you, look at the most difficult situation in your life and begin to do this, begin to yield, begin to ask Jesus for his mind regarding that situation. What does redemption look like for that situation? And begin to feel his fresh faith dispensing through you as you get his mind regarding that situation, his heart regarding that situation. And you'll start to see it practice on your life force the circumstances of your life to serve you, to take you deeper into this co-reigning, redemptive walk with Jesus. And I encourage you, go into Song of Solomon and really listen to him until your whole heart just ignites with this truth. So bless you. Thank you. 
so much for being with me today and I look forward to being with you again next Monday. Have an amazing week. God bless. Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are going to be so blessed.